By early 1922, Carnarvon had been bankrolling Carter's search in the Valley of the Kings for five years without any sign of Tut's tomb. But then, Carter made an intriguing discovery. He marked it on a map. Is this the map? Phenomenal. This is the map. So, at the top, it's the Valley of the Kings, drawn by Howard Carter, Carnarvon excavations. Lord Carnarvon Howard Carter exposed these workmen's huts in 1921. And this is the tomb of the great Pharaoh Ramses VI, which stretches all the way back. And when this was being dug, the workmen who were building it lived in these huts just here. Lord Carnarvon Howard Carter thought if there was any place that had not been excavated, it must be there. Most believed every inch of the Valley of the Kings had been excavated. But the discovery of these ancient huts proved the ground under them hadn't been touched for thousands of years. Carter believed if Tut's tomb was anywhere, it would be here. But Carnarvon had a cash flow problem. Lord Carnarvon was struggling with his stately overdraft, which is very familiar. So um, he said to Howard Carter, we're going to have to stop. <laughs> Howard Carter came for a weekend in June 1922 and persuaded Lord Carnarvon to have one more throw of the dice. One more gig. <laughs> By the 1st of November 1922, Carter had returned to the Valley of the Kings and started to dig below the ancient workers' huts. Three days later, Carter found a step, and that meant that he found a tomb. It was a momentous discovery, because he knew this ground hadn't been disturbed for over 3,000 years. The step would have looked quite like this set of steps here. This is a, a tomb from further up the Valley of the Kings, from about the same period as Tutankhamun, same size and scale. And if we go down here, we'll get a sense of just what Carter found. As they dug down, 16 steps just like these were revealed. At the bottom, Carter found the entrance to the tomb itself had been bricked up and plastered over. And what's very exciting for Carter is that on that plaster, the priests had put seals as they closed it up. And that meant it looked like this door had not been penetrated. Carter was extremely excited. He immediately wrote to Carnarvon and said, at last I've made a wonderful discovery in the valley, a magnificent tomb with seals intact, recovered same for your arrival. Congratulations. Imagine getting that telegram. Lord Carnarvon caught a ship and headed for Egypt. Three weeks later, on the 25th of November 1922, he arrived in the Valley of the Kings. Together, Carter and Carnarvon could now break through the sealed doorway. This is the modern entrance to King Tutankhamun's tomb. Now, I have never been here before, so I've been looking forward to this moment ever since I first heard about him as a child. So here we go. Very modern, <laughs> St steep steps going down, and then, ah, oh, yeah, look down here, this is it, this is it. This would have been the original entrance. This, the archway here, that was the sealed door. They still had their doubts, but by this stage, they were sort of letting themselves just dare to believe that this might be the tomb of King Tut. So with what must have been extraordinary excitement, they started breaking through. Remember that very little was known about this mysterious pharaoh. They hoped that what they would discover beyond this doorway would alter all that. At the time, even the identity of Tut's parents wasn't certain. But today, that's all changed. Thanks to DNA tests carried out on the royal mummies, most held here at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. I'm meeting Dr. Ashraf Salim to discover what's been revealed about Tutankhamun and his family. We examined approximately 20 mummies and we found that some of them are really related to King Tutankhamun by the DNA testing. 
Some of his relations are here in the museum. Oh, yeah, sure. And I can show you. OK, let's go. So who have we got here? OK, that's the great Queen T. She's the grandmother of King Tutankhamen. Sorry for being stupid, but is that her real hair? Yes. That's one of the most beautiful mummies in the Egyptian museum. OK, so we've got grandmother here with all her hair. Very good. Yes. Well, who's next? The great pharaoh. Akhenaten. It's the father of King Tutankhamun. In here we have uh, bones, just bones, not a real mummy. We don't know why it was that, but that's what we're having here. And who well, else have we got? Who, which other relatives have we got? How exciting that you found all these people. It's remarkable. <laughs> yeah. And who's this one here? This is proved by the DNA testing to be the mother of King Tutankhamun. Really? And she was not only his mother, she was his aunt as well. Yes, because... Oh, so Akhenaten's sister? Exactly. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This oh. was common in these days that brother and sister get married. Really? So, yes. This incestuous relationship wasn't the only incredible secret revealed when Tut's DNA was tested. What other information could you glean about Tutankhamun himself? This was an incidental uh, discovery that uh, King Tut suffered from malaria. Malaria? Yes. Because I'm interested in how he died. Is, this, yes. is malaria a possible cause of death? Yes. What he got was the uh, malignant form, in a sense, is the more aggressive type of malaria. And among the possible theories of uh, cause of death of King Tutankhamun is malaria, yes. Professor Ruli is part of the team that CT scanned Tut's mummified body. Incredibly, we can now dissect it using this state-of-the-art virtual autopsy. This is the most amazing tool I've ever seen in my life. It's a great tool. It allows us to explore the whole mummy. You can actually get rid of some of the tissues you can just show the bones, the yeah. more hard tissue. And also, you can actually cut through the body in different slices. That's extraordinary. First, I want to know, did the real Tutankhamun actually look like the beautiful young man we know from his golden mask? Let's start with the side of the mummy. What we see here is that he has a sort of overbite. And also, you see his quite special shape of his head. So, very prominent teeth, not quite how he's portrayed in his death mask. This is his Instagram face he's showing the world. <laughs> what can we tell about his state of health in the last few days of his life? There is one area where we should have a close look at, that's his feet, feet region. You see here that on the left feet, you have like part of the toe missing in comparison to the right one. This might be so-called Curler's disease, which is a bone necrosis, which actually may have affected his way of walking. He could have had some pain, some swelling, um, some sort of infections maybe related to it. During his teenage years, the bones in Tut's foot would have become increasingly weak and may even have collapsed. And there's also evidence of a second abnormality. We also see that they have a bit of a different shape. On the right-hand side, we see this one is more flat. This one is more curved. So we have this sort of club foot type of thing on the left foot. So possibly a clubbed foot. And, and what, again, that would be an issue around mobility, would it? You basically have the wrist of your foot showing outwards, and that makes you a bit moving in a strange way. I think if the theory is true and he would have had pain and this deformity of the left foot, um, he may have been limping and using a stick. Uncomfortable. These serious conditions were probably congenital disorders caused by his family's inbreeding. That astonishing CT scan suggests that towards the end of his life, Tutankhamun was suffering from a number of physical impairments. He must have spent the last few months, days of his life in physical pain. But were these medical issues ultimately responsible for his death? <laughs>